Hey guys, welcome back to Envision Prototypes. I'm Nick. In today's video, we're going to be installing a custom set of factory headlights. Yeah, you heard that right. Custom factory. This is a custom car. And these are factory Mini Cooper headlights. You've seen us form up the sheet metal, all that stuff. Well, today we're going to go ahead and wire up these headlights. If you've been following along with this build, it's been about two years since we drove the donor Mustang into the shop, peeled the body off, stripped everything down, and hand formed a new body over top. Well, Everything underneath is still stock Mustang, including the wiring harnesses. So we don't have to do too much in that respect. The thing is, we have to adapt the wiring from the Mini Cooper headlight into the Mustang wiring harness. And that's where these come in. They're pigtails for a set of Mini Cooper headlights. But just looking at it, you've got three wires, a brown, yellow, green, blue, and white, or white and blue. It's a white with a blue tracer. And then Mustang is actually back in here. And it is a green, with a white tracer, brown and yellow with a white tracer. Now, obviously they don't match up. We can go ahead and try guessing which wire is gonna work with what. Uh, green and white, uh, closest one is white and blue. You know, it doesn't work. We have to figure out what wires are the high and low beam as well as ground for the Mini Cooper, as well as the high and low beams for the Mustang. And that's where these pieces of paper come in. They have these little lines drawn all over them. They're called schematics, wiring diagrams. And this is what we're gonna be using to work one harness into the other. This is the Mustang schematic, and these little notes here are for the Mini Cooper. Figured out which is high and low beam. Um, let's see here. High beam, yellow and blue. So that's that wire there. Brown is ground. Who would think? Usually brown is black, but in today's cars, you can never tell. And white and blue is low beam. And in regards to the Mustang, uh, light green and white is the low beam and yellow white is the high beam. So since these connectors are no good to us, we're gonna take and chop them off, strip the wires back, strip these wires back, get some shrink wrap, slide it onto the wire, onto the uh, wires themselves and uh, solder them up. And that's gonna be the new pigtail, new plug for the Mini Cooper headlights. Without a wiring diagram, it'd be next to impossible. The old Chevys, the old Fords, I was familiar with their harnesses. They were pretty standard, but uh, things have changed a lot. The gauge of wire has changed a lot. Those old harnesses, my gosh, you needed two men and a boy to carry them around. They're huge. They're still huge, but they weigh a lot less now. So this is a little wire stripper that I have. It holds the wire and shears off the insulation. So that's one. I better stand up because I don't want to scratch the new paint in case you haven't noticed. It's called Tequila Sunset. Okay, so they have a wire loom on the wires. So I've kind of pulled it back, but I don't want to pull it all off. It's not necessary. It's a custom color we mixed up with this car and it has quite the flop on it. And I'm not going to show you too much in the shop because these lights in here don't do it justice. When we roll it outside, sit down because it'll blow you off your feet. Okay, those are all ready. Today we're going to focus on the wiring. Headlight wiring, uh, the tail lights. that's another thing I want to show you. How that's come out with those custom printed bezels. And let's pull off some of this tape it's coming off anyway okay now before we forget I better strip this one back a little more I like to strip them back about an inch and that allows me to kind of wrap each wire around nice and tight making sure we have good contact the heat shrink matched up to the gauge of wire that you have a thicker gauge of course because you won't get it over otherwise I was saying we're going to be focused on wiring today. The rear quarter vent or quarter windows, we're going to get them wired up. I have to build a harness just for that. And the fuel door, we need to figure something out for that because it's, it's remote now. But aside from that, everything else on the car is stock. So the main fuse panel for the car for the whip power windows is in here. So we're going to piggyback off that, feed it inside. And then we'll take off and I'll show you the wiring harness that we're going to be working with. Okay, 
Now it's going to get kind of tighten here. So I'm going to basically show you out here. I'm going to wrap the one wire around the other and uh, make sure we have no loose strands sticking up. Use a little torch, heat the wire up and you don't want to overheat it and you don't want a cold solder joint either. So heat it up just enough through experience. You'll figure it out that uh, practice on some scraps and then use some solder. This stuff for electrical, not the plumbing stuff. And you just feed it in to the wire until you have a nice shiny coated braided uh, joint. And then once it cools off and not any sooner, because you know, you'll find out quickly why, take and slide the insulation up over top. And again, use a torch, play a little bit of heat over it and it's done. Let's get this on. We're on the final stretch guys. Black on the Mustang does mean ground, but on the Mini Cooper, brown is ground. Just double check. I do not want to mix them up because it'll annoy a lot of people when you're coming in their direction with uh, high beams. Wish you guys could see. I'll bring you guys in. I'll show you how the wires are done up. Just let me get this last one done. You always want to solder your joints. Otherwise they're going to oxidize and you have poor connections and your lights won't work. Okay. Nice little flame there. Oop. So much for the flame. Now there's a way to lock this thing as well. You heat up your joint. Don't overheat it. You don't want to heat the solder either. You want to heat the wire and have the solder melt into the wire. There we go. It's one. So I touch the wire when the solder starts melting, you know, it's hot enough Just like that. And you don't want to overdo it with the solder either. Don't put gobs on it. It's not necessary. Oh, okay. Spoke too soon. And the third one. Okay, this is cooled off now. So now we can take and slide the heat shrink over top in the joint. Make sure it's centered. You can feel it through it. And take and play the heat over top of the heat shrink and bring it down. Done. We're going to place a wire loom over top of this afterwards, like that there. But for now, I just want to take and kind of put them together. You don't want to go crazy with the tape, just enough to cover everything up. And then we'll get a little extension to go to the end. Let's get rid of this little tail here. There we go. So that's done for the headlight. I'll tuck that in there. Okay, so with the uh, headlight finished, you can go ahead and do the signal light. Get the connector on for that. I guess I should have slid the heat shrink over top before stripping the insulation off. Right, pull it back far enough. And in case you didn't catch it, the reason you don't slide the insulation or the heat shrink over top of your joint right after soldering it, it will shrink and you get about halfway over the joint and you'll have half exposed and half, uh, come on. Well, that's strange. weird. The diameter changed. Could be from the heat from my fingers. There we go. It's 
defective heat shrink. <laughs> okay, so now we, and then the other thing is, I should have mentioned that, I guess, you have to make sure both lengths of, of strip wire are the, are the same. Strip the back, there we go. All right. Here, in this case, blue to blue works. Now, normally we'll cut and polish the body after the majority of the assembly has been finished. In case we have a mishap somewhere and we need to touch something up, blow something in, uh, it can still be done and we don't have to repolish it. We do get a bit of assembly dust on the car too, so uh, once everything's more or less done, then we'll go ahead and I will, actually, I can't take the credit for it. Uh, we'll polish the body. Okay, that's for another connector there. Get some solder. Torch. See, this one I can show you right out in the open. Then we'll go ahead and move into the interior. Or perhaps, I'll show you the taillight. Yeah, I'm sure you guys want to see that. So we'll do that next. A little bit too much. Fixed. It's okay if the insulation catches a little bit because it will all be covered up in the end. Without schematics, this would be next to impossible to figure out unless you do this every day and you know by heart all the wiring harnesses for every car. So it's the right way to do it. It's like building a buck. Otherwise, you're waving a stick in water, you're not going to get anywhere. See, that's still too warm. I'm going to take and let that cool off. And then we'll take care of that one. This one we'll do after. Leave that there. So, and this is also another best friend. Continuity tester. Checking grounds. Checking. It'll help you out a lot. So, I'm not going to drop the headlight in just yet. I know you want to see it. But uh, we will do that. You know what? Let's do it. But why not? Let's do it. I'm curious myself. Why not? Uh oh. Oh, there's the insulation there. Okay. Boom. And oops, right there. Make sure that the ends are sealed. Done. And then I have to get a different connector for that last wire. So we're going to leave that right there for now. Uh, right there for now. That way I can put the headlight in. It's a little bit dusty. I have to clean them all up. After I've been looking at it, this shiny border, we are going to eliminate that. We're going to go with a brushed finish. I'll show you in another video how we go about doing that. For now, let's very carefully slide it in. Okay. I'm not going to push it in all the way because I can't get it at it properly to pop it back out, but there you go. Looks pretty trick, doesn't it? See, dust on there already. So it's gonna look good. Let's go to the back. I'll show you the tail lights. And there we go. We can't uh, install the main light fixture yet. We need to do a little more work inside. There's a release solenoid inside there. I don't know if you guys can see it for the fuel door. So I have to get that in. When we were creating the seats for the taillights, I had mentioned that uh, we're going to only run with one light bulb for the flasher. The Mustang had two. And if you simply pull out one of them, the circuit is going to think that the light bulb burnt out and the flasher is going to flash faster. It looks really cheesy. So we're going to install this device here. And this is basically a device that tricks the circuit into thinking that second light bulb is still there through a set of resistors. You're going to take and plug in that plug right there into one of here, these here sockets, doesn't matter which one. Pull the light, one light bulb out, do this. Come on, hard with one hand. Come on, nope. I'll get there, there we go. Take that one out, take this second one out. We're gonna take and plug the circuit into there, just like that, kind of, there. And then we take the light bulb, and we plug it into the 
kind of like that. You can't do it with one hand. And these two resistors, like I said, get mounted to the body. You screw them down. And you just plug that light bulb into our housing. This is a single housing. We've got the backup light, running light, and parking or brake light and signal light right there. That's it. So if you don't run with one of these, like I mentioned, your lights are going to flash much faster than normal. It looks really weird. Okay, so we're back inside the 40 Ford and we have to add some wiring for these window mechanisms, these power actuators here, as well as over there. And I didn't want to add any switches into the dash. I didn't want to butcher the dash and take away from the factory appearance. So we're going to put the switches into the center console. Uh, the cup holders, the owner doesn't want any food or drinks in any of his cars. So you eat and drink outside the car. Simple as that. So we're going to take and create a faceplate to go into that cup holder area. And in that faceplate, we're going to mount some switches for the power window actuators, fuel door release solenoid, as well as one special feature that I'll tell you about sometime later on. So I've created a harness, basically four wires, two running to each actuator. The switch is going to re reverse the polarity to make the windows go up and down. So we've got four wires running to the back there for that. We have a hot wire that's coming in from the front fuse box. You always want to install a fuse between the power source and whatever you're installing in the car. If the motor gets a short circuit, you don't want to burn your car down. If the wire gets pinched or whatever, you don't want to have any trouble. Fuse will blow, circuit's dead. So that's a hot wire that's fused, ignition actuated. So when the ignition's on, then we'll have power to raise and lower these windows. And uh, there's a blue wire in here for the fuel door release solenoid. So that's also going out and it's going to kind of weave its way through the factory harness and get out to the back quarter area. So right now what I have to do is connect our two leads coming to the driver's side from the switches here to the motor. And as you can see, we have a factory plug here. So we don't need to rely on little clips or anything like that. It's a factory locking plug that uh, won't give us any trouble later on. And we have a bit of excess material here so we can chop this off. Like that, that's garbage. And before I forget, get some heat shrink on the two wires. Now we're going to get these all soldered up again. And that way there won't be any trouble in the future with oxidation. Strip off about an inch. Like that. This one's been stripped off already. We'll clean it up a little bit. Wiring a hot rod can get interesting at times. This is relatively simple. Uh, if it helps to draw it out on a piece of paper, how the schematic or how the diagram the wire layout goes, do it because, and then save it too. Because in the future, like three weeks down the road, you might forget what you did. I know I will. I should go get the torch and some solder. That's the one thing I didn't, didn't bring into the car yet. And I need to cover up this rug here. I placed the rug in the car so I know exactly where the seat impressions are so we don't place any wires under the pads of the seat. That's nice. Okay. okay just pull the rug back like that. Make sure you don't have any strands sticking up that poke through your heat shrink. And again, color in this case doesn't matter because it came from two different vehicles. Just add a tiny bit of solder, let it kind of get absorbed into your Wiring into the copper. Oop. Good. Let that cool off. And then we'll take the heat shrink and move it up. Uh, I'm going to drill a hole later on. We have a little 
button clip here that we'll just take and stab that in so that your wire doesn't rub on the edge of a piece of metal. Come through, create a dead short, burn the car down. It's those little things you gotta look out for. Let me jump over there, get those soldered. I'll come back here and finalize that. Got ourselves a battery here and we can test this out. So, um, yeah, green and brown, I like green and brown. I try to match gauge of wire with what is on say the motor or whatever you're working with. You don't want the wire feeding that to be too light. Should be good. So once we go ahead and heat shrink those connections, we'll give that a try and see what happens. Make sure we have continuity from here to there. Good there. Double check and make sure that nothing protrudes through that heat shrink. Shrink this down, like that, beautiful. And let's test it out. Ooh, we have motion. I think that's at the top. Beautiful, that's it, we're tested, everything works. And uh, I'll do the other side, make sure that works as well. And when we wire up the switches, again, that'll reverse the polarity to allow our window to go up and down. So that's a small glimpse into wiring up a hot rod. This is a relatively simple circuit. The switches we got do have a schematic as to how you wire it and where you feed the power into them. And then they do the rest. And you just have to make sure that you're supplying the proper gauge of wire nice and neatly. This will all be tied off nicely. Little clips installed, finalized, so we don't have a spaghetti mess, spaghetti factory going on. So next biggest thing for me is to take and run the source for the fuel release door and get that installed. And that button is gonna be hidden on the dash. So just the owner knows exactly where it is to release the door. All I'm gonna say is it was a lot of fun, fun figuring out the smart junction box, the wiring within the smart junction box to allow us to do that. It's not an easy feat and you don't wanna cut the wrong wire or feed juice to the wrong wire and then not be able to start the car later on. So, all right guys, uh, that's pretty much it for the wiring on this. Everything works, tested, I'll get the other side done. And uh, that's it, so next time you'll see the center console in place, I'll probably do a video on that and have the switches installed and uh, actually working from the switches. So everything has a process, it just takes time to do it. Once a car is painted, everything seems to take so much longer get finished because you don't want to scratch anything you don't want to damage anything all right guys thanks for watching take care